does it look remotely familiar to you? Should it? Are you lost, sir? Not at all. I'm right where I need to be. I'm Sherlock Holmes, by the way. Ursula Oni, the chief archivist. How can I help you exactly? I need to take a look at the history of Cordona and its islanders to retrieve some, hopefully, useful information. Your brother Mycroft told me that you were direct, and now that we've met, I can see that is true. Someone in our family has to balance the evasive nature of my brother. Well, may I use the city archives? You may, of course. But in return, perhaps dinner? That's a high price to pay for looking at your archives. <laughs> I was teasing you. Pay no attention to me. With your love for archives, you would have made the perfect bureaucrat. I'm curious, how did Mycroft recruit you? I doubt you're a field agent. I imagine you work with intelligence. That's correct. Your brother noticed me when I tracked down a spy at the archives. That's how our cooperation began. And you? Did Mycroft force you into this? Not at all. We simply have a mutual interest in someone. Or something. Of course. A fruitful and willing collaboration, I'm sure. Well, I'm his younger brother. I have to accept the consequences of being a close relative of an official figure. I suppose, in a way, we are colleagues, Mr. Holmes. In the remotest way possible, Miss Oni. you. Collect them all and return for more. <sighs> Guests of Cordona, the treasures await you. May I ask you something? Ex excuse me? What? I'm not sure I know. Does it look remotely familiar to you?
heaven. Oh, why do I get the worst jobs? Salty breeze, old ruins, dusty roads. Do you recall clambering over these walls as a child? Perhaps. Did we find something at the top? Tonight, Aiden stands there, recruiting non-rebellious workers for the dig.
Merhaba. Can you satisfy my curiosity? You and I are the economic foundation of this island. We should help each other. But I don't know what you are talking about. Excuse me, just one question. Sounds familiar, but no. Ask someone else. Sir, kind sir, might I steal your attention? I am not buying. Ah, that is the thing. You won't waste a single mangir. I am a digger, you see, and I have heard of a dig site so deep it clogs your ears. I want to be there. Why are you telling me this? I have heard of a man recruiting for such a dig. A man with a scar. Such as uh, the one that you're hiding. And your boots are dirty with the deep clay I am so familiar with. Oh, I, I hope it wasn't too rude of me to point that out. You have a good eye. And you just want to dig? Dig deep and that's it? What's the catch? Are you in desperate need of money? Oh, there is no catch, sir. I, I won't even ask for advance pay. Just give me a shovel and I'll dig a hole like you've never seen. Huh. Is that so? Well, I have to ask you an important question first. Would you be fine working for Brits? I am all for them. Well, you say that, but can you prove it? I'll sing you a very special song. God save our gracious queen. Cut it! Or people here will make you their queen. I can also speak in limericks. Please don't. You might be a little bit weak in the head, but a natural born digger with a keen eye is what we need. Take this permission slip and go to this address. The guard will let you in and check with the professor once you're there. Stop loitering and get inside. Newcomer, talk to the professor first. He's the old fellow with the glasses and the plans. Could you help me? I like you, friend, but I can't help you. Where's the fire in your eyes? Where's the smile? I am sick and tired of seeing apathy among the new workers. Sir, believe me, I do have the spark. I want to start work straight away. It's as important to me as it is to you. Ah, that's the spirit. I'm on the verge of a great discovery. I am ready to work. Splendid. Do you know what I am working on?
archaeological treasure. Uh, you're hoping to find something priceless, something that will change our history. Bravo, young man. I couldn't have said it better myself. It's true. We're looking for Vitus Lemonius's tomb. I'll help you. That is my goal as a worker. Good. Listen to me carefully, then. I hate repeating myself. I am Professor Swift. We have three rules here. Don't touch anything, always return the tools, and don't distract me unless you find something. Sounds simple enough. Are you the only one in charge here, Mr. Swift? Yes, I am the only one, and no one else. You hear anything other than that, it's a lie. People of your kind can have difficulty understanding who's in charge. Take a minute, memorize my face, and then get to work. Oh, I will definitely take a closer look to memorize my superior. I bet that tomb is worth a lot of money. Are you not here for that? See, young man, how quickly you get distracted by the promise of treasure. You cannot appreciate the importance of my work. But you clearly have little or no money. Old clothes, untended wounds, you have no one beside you. That's the price of discovery. I have to surround myself with fools like you who wish only to feed their stomachs instead of their brains. I was just asking. It is uh, my curiosity. I cannot control it uh, sometimes. Uh, don't let me go, sir. If you'll just stop asking stupid questions, I won't have to fire you. So get to work! And you better find something useful. Take a shovel and dig. Don't take a shovel and dig. Not while he can see me. This reminds me of my father's room. A plan for this whole operation. This might prove useful. I'll note it down. Ah, let me warm my bones here.
straw dolls. Eerie, but effective for a scene recreation. Oh, I want one of these. Or two. Oil cloth. Won't fade and waterproof. Enough here to make tent sails and more. Take a shovel and dig. Sharpest pickaxe. <laughs> A guilty pleasure of the real archaeologist. Missing your Laura, Mr. Swift? Hey, a word about the trilogy. Right then, you literary expert. You, what was so important about these books? Or do you simply need some kindling? It's inspirational. I have a plan. Are you listening? I wish I wasn't, but I am. So, we catch a monkey, a langa, for example, then we extract some blood from it. What? Why? It will make us forever young, Cherry. Page 127 of the second book. Oh, I am so done with this. No, wait. Then how about we make a wax statue? I've stopped listening, John. Working and living by the sea, what a dream. It's quite daunting to see how deep the dig is. Swift lost his temper when he learned what happened to the sea. Swift lost his... Swift lost his temper. Swift lost his temper when he learned what happened to the statue.
Swift lost his temper. Oh, well, I guess we'll have to try again. Remember to focus only on what's relevant to the room. Swift lost his temper. Swift lost his temper. You and I are the economic foundation of this island. We should help each other. But I don't know what you are talking about. Excuse me, just one question. I like you, friend, but I can't help you. Somehow, the text remains legible. Let's see if I remember my Latin. A sickle for harvesting. The ancient Romans honored the seasons. Goddess? A mother. Someone's wife. There were four statues here originally. I wonder what the three other statues look like. I see now. Mr. Swift didn't realize the significance of the statues.
You're not even trying, Sherry. Concentrate. It seems everything's in place. Now, let's see what this has to tell us. Vitus rests nearby. Beware the one who wishes to disrupt his sleep, for he is guarded by the gazes of his brother and the autumn wind. Take a shovel and dig. while he can see me. Daunting to see how deep the dig is.
Here is your discovery, Mr. Swift. Hey, look at this. What have you found? Don't let anyone touch anything there. Eureka! I found you, my friend. of darts, handy against rodents of all kinds. Hey, what do you think you're doing? Trying to take over my research, are you? I come here to pick up my diary, and I find you snooping around. Explain yourself. Mr. Swift, if that were true, I would have been on my way to the newspaper. My name is Sherlock Holmes. I didn't have a chance to introduce myself properly. Outrageous! You deceived me, sir! What is the reason for your being here? Who sent you, Mr. Holmes? Theodore Gildon's premature death brought me here. Theodore? Is dead? How can that be possible? I'm thinking of all the possibilities, and I'm not crossing out anyone who might have been involved. Even his elephant. The land you're excavating belongs to Mr. Gildon, does it not? Did I hear an accusation? I have nothing to hide. You can ask me whatever nonsense you've prepared as a token of my diminishing respect towards you. Very well, Mr. Swift. I appreciate your cooperation. Were you at the site this morning? Affirmative. This project is taking a lot of my time, as you see. I spend more time underground than on the surface. When did you learn about Theodore's death? Just now. You just told me. And you aren't surprised, shocked. I won't tell anyone if you shed a tear or two. Weren't you partners, after all? We were. And it is a real shame. But I've seen too many deaths in my life, Mr. Holmes, for the news to truly shake me. When was the last time you saw Mr. Gildon? A couple of days ago. We discussed the site. I believe in the tomb and its secrets. Theodore's patience was stretched, however. He was already inventing new projects. It wasn't a long conversation. I suppose that his daughter will inherit everything now, along with all of the eccentricities and problems. And not forgetting Goliath. Eccentricities and problems, Mr. Holmes. One of many. Will you allow me to return to my research? Or are you insisting on remaining an obstacle? Oh, I haven't even started yet. I forgot I left some stones unturned. I have to leave. You have a weakness for nostalgia? Or, rather, do you use it to record a list of enemies? Young man, you need to check your moral compass. Reading another person's diary is a sin in every culture that I can think of. But you aren't answering the question. You've already read it. Why bother? I simply record my life to keep my memory clean from misinterpretation. Letters and pages don't lie. But the writer of the text can. With this book, you attempted to plan an attack on the elephant? Your insinuations are out of place. Goliath is a frightening animal. All I wished to do was to understand the creature. As any scientist would do, I researched, analyzed, and drew conclusions. Hmm. Then what conclusion did you draw? 
that Theodore Gilden made the animal miserable. He couldn't provide the proper environment for the beast. My interest in the subject ended there. What's with this box of darts? Is it for a scientific argument? A little darker than that. Rather for killing the kind of rodents that might nibble a nose or a toe in your sleep. Let's just say I have to protect myself against a larger animal, such as an elephant. Might it be enough to stop it, make it faint? If I were you, I wouldn't bank on it. I'm a busy man. I'm a busy man. As far as I can tell, you're a man of the academic world, so this book about Nabe and Laura is just an empirical study? What? That nonsense? I'd prefer to lose my eyesight than read such trash. So, you know nothing about it? I know nothing. I wish I'd never heard of it in the first place, this caricature of science. Do I hear traces of envy? You're still relatively young that you might find your own, Laura. Perhaps I envy, Nabe, for I cannot simply blow people up for distracting me. That's all. You happy now? Wonderful. Moving on. What's with this intricate recruitment process? Pro-British workers charge less? As a head of this organization, I need to secure a productive environment. It's impossible to do so if there are political differences. Especially here, where the native population doesn't support our efforts to find the ancient artifacts. Decent pay can also stimulate productivity and shut down any political discord. Hadn't you thought of that? You're young. You have time to fritter and fight with everyone you meet. I don't have such a luxury. Our workers receive enough pay for what they do. So don't start a discussion you know nothing about. I've nothing to add. I'm a busy man. Did this plan cause a rift in your business relationship with Theodore Gilden? Nothing like that. Admittedly, we didn't share a common vision of what is more important, the past or the future. In my opinion, we can't build a future without knowing the past. So you wanted to save the tomb of Vitus here, or perhaps your control over the research? Only the knowledge that rightly belongs to humankind, nothing less and nothing more. I'm a busy man. Remember one of the rules? It uh, seems that you didn't return a tool. Is this knife yours? Do I look like a fellow who carries a knife? I don't need it. There are plenty of uses for it on the site. And outside of it. I have other people to cut ropes for me, Mr. Holmes. Your partner had a very specific attitude towards the things he treasured. Was this habitual for him? That would have been too much even for him. Don't get me wrong, he had a harsh temper. Like a true businessman, he was ready to burn his competitors to the ground. But threatening someone physically would have been something new even for him, am I correct? Absolutely. Besides, I had never seen him this angry. The fellow who received the letter must have been extremely alarmed. Moving on. Gildan's Elephant is quite an unusual addition to Cordona's fauna. What is your scientific opinion on that? No matter how much Theodore loved it, it still remained a wild animal trapped inside a stone pen. Goliath needs savannas, fields, lakes. I'm sure that Goliath did not have a plan to kill his owner to head to the savannas. What do you think? No, animals don't kill in a typical sense. I can only presume that it tried to protect itself from captivity, from Theodore. It was a gilded cage that was predestined to break. I've nothing to add. Moving on. I'm a busy man. Have you seen this person before? The one beside Imogen Gilden? No, but he's with Imogen, so I suppose that he's a friend of hers. That girl always has her head in the clouds. I could have said Theodore was different, but that wouldn't have been entirely true. Away with the fairies, was he? That's one way of putting it. Either way, I don't know much about Imogen's life or her friends. The type of elite that pretends to be educated.
Swift. Be swift. This fabric will work.
Just be quick. Too ordinary a room for a champion. There's no incentive to put in any effort. It might fool an elephant. Mrs. Nini seems to know her sewing inside out. Uh, I bet she missed us. I hope Miss Nini won't misunderstand me. He's even been putting up posters. Oh. May I ask for your assistance? I have no idea. I'm sorry.
Can you satisfy my curiosity? I'm sorry to disappoint you, but I don't know about that. Is this familiar to you? You have a job, so why don't you go back to it instead of bothering me? You obviously haven't thought this all through. Or are you just annoying these people on purpose? Oh, Senior Holmes. You taught the police how to do their job, and they found the thief. Of course I will help you. But what sort of doll? A child's doll, such as my great-niece might play with? Um, a little larger than your typical doll. Signore, I don't understand. Boy, girl, animal, and what color? Animal, um, a passionate, perhaps amorous animal. Ah, oh, Signore, you talk in riddles. I am an old lady who's seen it all. Tell me what you need. I need a life-size elephant. I think Mrs. Nini outdid herself with this one. Is that a tail? That's a trunk, John, but I must agree with you that it's her masterpiece. Well, let's not waste any time. So, what's the plan? I hope it all doesn't go horribly wrong. We know that the elephant is seeking a female. We can arrange that. A doll with the appropriate scent might do miracles. So, you're a marriage broker? Well, I suppose that makes me a groomsman. Oh, she is a bit breezy, I must say. Well, Goliath is eager for a single female elephant in his area. It should be just enough for his taste. You'll need to trust me. Are we ready? I can't stand the tension. We're ready. Let's call the elephant. How could anyone resist? I knew a lady once who said just that. Too bad I'm not an elephant. Take your time, Sherry. That deserves a slap, and then a kiss. And here's our lovesick friend. What is the meaning of this? Why are you bringing it here? I won't allow you to leave it. I assure you that it is only a temporary measure. It won't be long until the elephant is gone, I promise you. <laughs> it injured itself while running through the forest. The left tusk is larger and more worn. You're a left tusk elephant. <laughs> he 
peaceful and compliant, almost a gentleman. The left tusk is larger and more worn. You're a left tusk elephant. A royal suite for a favorite pet. something in the needle. A feathered fletching. This might be promising.
feel safe with that beast back here. Stop lock. You are guilty, Mr. Swift. Killing Theodore Gildon was a testing challenge. You succeeded. What makes you think I'm somehow involved in Gildon's death? My partner's death, I might remind you. You were there when Theodore Gildon died. Nonsense. I visited him many times, but I wasn't there when the elephant killed him. Then I must have made a mistake because the murderer met Goliath's rage personally. The perpetrator was hit by the gate and thrown into the shed. Your bruise matches the contour of the broken hole. One further detail is that the murderer had a bosun's knife. Fairly useful in a place where one might cut ropes and fabric, such as, I don't know, the dig site? That's your interpretation of the facts, Mr. Holmes. You've simply aligned them to suit your hypothesis. It's not a hypothesis once proven, it's theory, Mr. Swift. Your dart uses strychnine to kill rodents at the site, is that correct? Well, yes, that is its purpose. The same dart with strychnine was found on Goliath. The very same substance is a powerful stimulant. It causes convulsions, a flow of energy. You shot Goliath. The elephant became extremely energetic, agitated, and so terrified that it killed its owner. For a man of your age, it was easier to hit a larger grey target than a small man. You said it yourself. Goliath killed Theodore, and your strychnine speculations are absurd. Only athletes use it as a stimulant, not elephants. True, but one dart of strychnine would not be enough to kill the elephant, and you knew it. Let me tell you a story. A man spends almost five years of his life locating an artifact. He puts every ounce of energy and money into his research. The same man even goes so far as to sign a contract with a ruthless man, a businessman. It was a risk, but the reward would be worth it. 
Years go by, and there's still no result. So the businessman decides to end the man's research. He spits on the research. He promises to bury the site under an eccentric project. All of this is just his whim. Theodore Gildon could do anything he wanted with this place, and you were anxious about the fate of your research. You wish to protect it. You tried to tame Gildon's eccentricity, but you killed him instead. Theodore wasn't trying to sabotage my career. We had a disagreement, but it wasn't as dire as you describe it. He wasn't a pleasure to talk to, but killing him? Nonsense. Theodore Gildon was a capricious man, extremely impulsive. But the cold-blooded nature of your plan makes you even more dangerous. You feel nothing. You show no remorse. It was simply a calculated move. And that is why you are under arrest. Nothing. You have nothing on me. I think I'll let the police decide if my findings are substantial enough for prosecution. This is all a dreadful mistake. This can't be happening. The elephant killed Theodore. Goliath is innocent and he should be free. He is not the real murderer here. That is the apex of your career, Mr. Swift. Farewell. I told you Mr. Swift was not a real archaeologist. He was a murderer. I knew there was something wrong with him. Fortunately for us, being a murderer was not his profession. And about the elephant? While you were busy, I've dealt with it. No thanks to you. I asked you to solve this wretched problem, but you didn't. I couldn't be in two places at once, Miss Gildon. I was catching your father's murderer. But how have you dealt with it? A man agreed to take the elephant away. He came to me asking for permission to relocate it to his property, and I accepted. Well, congratulations, I suppose. That is one less problem. Actually, too, Mr. Holmes. I found my father's possessions that you can take with you and disappear. I appreciate it, truly. Well, someone has to do something. Take everything if you need to and leave me be. Take care of yourself, Miss Gildon. My mother always wore this around her neck until one day it disappeared. I was wondering where it went. She said it was a birthday present from a good friend. I just had another glimpse of a memory, John. It's fuzzy, but I'm sure it happens somewhere in the manor. Finally moving forward. Shall we go?